Hello and welcome to the CFS Health Recovery Podcast. I am your host, Toby Morrison, and boy, are you going to love this episode. In today's episode, we sit down with Margot Miller, who was a past client of the Mentorship Recovery Program. In today's episode, we talk all things recovery, from Margot's journey as a child all the way through her teenage years into her 20s where she was struck down with chronic fatigue syndrome. We talk about her journey from the start all the way to the finish of where she is now in her life, which is freaking amazing. Surprisingly, this podcast went in ways that I wasn't expecting it going. We went way deep into the psychology of recovery. We went into the body wisdom and the intelligence of the body and what that actually means on a day-to-day basis and how that can help you. And surprisingly, we spoke about how going through something like this, something so hard can be the best thing that ever happened to you. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to get you straight into this episode. Please sit back and relax and enjoy and be very prepared to be inspired. Enjoy. Hello and welcome everyone to this success interview at CFS Health. My name is Toby Morrison. I am your host today. And on the other side, super, super stoked to have this lovely lady from America, Margot Miller. Welcome. Hi. Thank you so much for coming on today. We've just been laughing and chatting off air about all (laughs) things Margot and what your plans are for the future. And you said that you're going to come to Australia this year and you feel like that's where you need to be, which is exciting. I can't wait. Get ready. Yeah. Get ready, Australia. Hey, uh, we're here (laughs) to talk about chronic fatigue syndrome recovery and super stoked to have you because your journey is pretty unique and especially your background and kind of what you do for a living is fascinating. And so, yeah, really, really wrapped to have you here just to paint a picture because you're fresh, you're looking good, you're in front of camera right now, but I'm sure like 10 years ago, that wasn't the case. And so people are watching this going, this lady looks fine. There's no way that she was ever sick before you joined the program and all that kind of stuff. Where were you? Yeah. So I think that's the hardest thing or one of the hardest things is that sometimes we can look totally fine, Mm. but we're like dying on the inside. So I was on track. I was getting my master's degree in marriage and family therapy. And in my last year of school, I got chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, sinusitis. I crashed. I had no idea what was wrong with me. And I just couldn't walk one day. Were you pushing yourself Um, like a hell of a lot at that time? What happened was I got like sinusitis. So I got some kind of sinus thing and then I could tell I was getting sick, but instead of just stopping like a normal human being would, I was like full throttle. I like totally fit the archetype of the personality with CFS. And I was just pushed, push, push. And I pushed myself through that entire year of grad school. And it was a literal form of torture. And at my graduation, I was asleep, like fully Mm. asleep in my chair with Mm. my hat on. I don't even know how I made it through that. Insane. Back then as well, like 10 years ago, it was still online on the internet. There wasn't much great things available. In fact, the CFS Health program started literally 10 years ago online. So that's just to show how old school it was back then you know what was it like back then when there wasn't much help what was going on it was so traumatizing so everyone thought i was making it up i went to doctors every single day doctors told me that i probably had a brain tumor and that i was gonna die people told me i had cancer like people had no clue or they would just be like you're depressed obviously which i think all of us have had that at some point so it took i think two and a half years in and obviously my family was like you're making this up. You just need to go get a job. And then finally, my neighbor who had chronic fatigue was like, this is not adrenal fatigue. You have a neurological disease. And then once she gave me that information, then I went back to doctors and they were like, oh yeah, this totally checks out because all my blood work was fine. Everything was great. I was a healthy young person that couldn't walk or sleep and was in pain all day so yeah it took i would think i think three years to get a diagnosis from my friend three years shit three years yeah and i was going to everyone under the sun spending hundreds and thousands of dollars on natural paths it was a mess were you quite like a popular person at school did you have friends 
I've always been super social. Even like when I was a kid, my teachers would go to my parents and be like, your kid cannot stop talking in class. Your kid is too social. You got to like chill it out. Yeah. And I've always been a really outgoing, energetic person. And it was really hard because all my friends' careers were taking off and I was just dead in bed. But I've always had a very off the beat kind of life anyways. So Mm. it wasn't the first time that my path looked very different from other people's. But yeah, and that would have been so hard. As, like, how old were you? 26. 26. Everyone's off doing their careers. Did you lose a lot of friends at that time? Oh, yeah. Oh, of mm. course. You can't have friends. And then it's also so hard for people to relate. People feel uncomfortable around illness. People don't know how to respond. So a lot of my friends were people who were sick. And then also kind of what ended up happening too is because I was in bed all day, I went into this role of like the way I connected with people was almost to be like my friend's on-call therapist. So if my friends were having a bad day, they would just call me because I was just available in bed. So then I got stuck in this role of being like dead in bed, sick, and then my friend's free on-call therapist. (laughs) It was not a good combination. And this is where boundaries come in, folks. I Uh, had none until I came across Toby and you were like, let me guess, you're a people pleaser. You have a hard time saying boundaries. You push. I was like, check, check, check. Sign me up. (laughs) Hilarious. (laughs) So you were 26 when this all happened. You were like a go-getter, constantly pushing yourself. You suffered for about 10 years almost, basically, before you joined the program. For you at the point before you joined the program, what was your absolute biggest challenge? Because we spoke on Instagram. I remember you reaching out going, ah, Toby, you know, I've just found your YouTube channel. It makes so much sense. I'm just not sure if this program is going to work for me. At that time, what was your biggest challenge? Okay. So I had kind of been done with like medical doctors. And at that point I had been doing all the mindset. I had done so much work on myself, so much healing. But I didn't really know how it was going to like work or Mm. what was the missing piece. When I got into your program and and it was the baseline, that thing took off. Like my health skyrocketed just from that alone. And you know, I'm probably your worst client. I like didn't know when the Zoom links were. I barely showed up ever. I just watched a few videos and I like, I got it. And it all clicked for me. So for me, I had done so much work on myself up until the point of your program, but I was not stabilized at all. Like I'd go on a trip and be fine. And then I'd come back and be dead in bed. My crashes were so extreme that it was so chaotic. Like I would be totally okay for a week or so. And then I would be unable to move for a month. It was chaos. That's right. That was at the point of you joining. Cause I remember you going some weeks, I'm totally fine. I'm like top of the world. And then for four weeks later, I can barely walk and I'm just in so much pain and struggling. And that is the push and crash cycle that we speak about so often. Mm-hmm. It's a unique situation for me in a way, because most people that come to us, you know, everyone's at a different journey. The, the reason why it clicked for you so fast is because of the work that you'd already done, which is years worth. It's not like you did a journaling for a week and all right, yeah, I'm ready, you know. Obviously you went through that journey of doctor, 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 you finally realized, okay, well, that's not really going to get me to where I want to be. And then you went on this self-healing journey and what was missing was the structure, the routine, the daily doings of your baseline and building up your capacity appropriately. But it makes sense because I remember you sent an email to the team and was like, oh my God, I know you think I've been missing and I haven't done anything, but I watched like three or four video trainings and it's been a game changer. This program's amazing. I'm good to go. And what was that like when you finally came into the program and you were like, oh, this is what's been missing. Not that it's a secret or a quick fix, but it just was like, this was the missing piece of the puzzle for you. Yeah. Right before I joined the program, I was at a bachelorette party and I was struggling so much. And I was like, that's it. I refuse. I'm getting well. And then I found you. And then when I got in the program, it was understanding that if I continued to people please and push, I was never going to get well. It is 100% impossible to be sick and stay in the same way of doing things. So I was like, I am willing to put myself first (laughs) wait dude this is so good but you've got like a hurricane behind you (laughs) can we get that window down a bit i I feel like you just said the best thing ever i'm like the people listening right now going what did she say 
<laughs> I was having a Beyonce moment. Yeah, literally. It was like Margot Miller, Actress 101. Here we go. Let's get the fan blowers out and the cameras. Let's say that again. So you said something about if I didn't learn how to figure out my baseline stabilize and stop people pleasing, I was never going to get well. It wasn't even an option at that point. It wasn't even hard at that point. It's going to be impossible to have health and not put myself first. So when friends would ask me, it stopped being hard. I was just like, I don't care if I feel guilty. I don't care if I feel bad. This is the only way I'm going to be able to walk or have a life. And so it forced me into being a totally different person. So good. Non-negotiables. It was a non-negotiable. And it just got easier. And I was like, why am I even putting other people this far above my health? It took your program to really get that. And I also want to mention too, that I think from what I've gathered of your story, you were this amazing athlete and you loved your life. I hated the track I was on, hated it. Like I hated ah. clinical therapy. I was like, my soul is being tortured. So for me, in a way, my health, the illness, although I wouldn't wish this upon anyone was the fast track to me creating a new life and a life that I actually like one where I put myself first, one with health. It transformed my entire being from the inside out. And I have a different life because of it. And I'm mm -hmm. grateful now, obviously I wouldn't want anyone to have to learn through this pathway, but it's not like I got well and I'm just right where I was. I feel like I burned through lifetimes and I created a totally different version of myself in the process. One of the trainings in our program is called the values align program. Mm -hmm. And it's only for lifestyle integration people. So people who are beyond recovery and integrating back into life. And the reason why that program is there values align is to create alignment in your life because i believe that a reason not the only reason but one of the reasons can be exactly what you just experienced where you're out of alignment you know it's so incongruent that your body is showing you and telling you that margot we need to stop this because this is not in line with my heart my gut my head <laughs> and it's saying no no this is not who i am and mm -hmm. I think it's so powerful. And that's why the values align program is there because we want to make sure that as we integrate back into life, we're moving forwards. It's like, am I living an aligned congruent life? What I'm good at, what I want to do. And it's powerful. A way to lose energy is by doing something that you totally hate. Yeah. And to your point, when I started to heal and get well, I wasn't a match to pretty much my whole life. As soon as I got well and changed parts about myself, all my friendships broke down. My living situation broke down. Nothing in my life was a match. And so I have all new friends. I'm in a whole new living environment. Like everything changed because I wasn't aligned anymore to that value system. I remember I went through that for recovery, you know, and we talk about it a lot about proximity is power in the sense that who are you hanging out with people who lift you up or people who put you down? Energy vampires is another phrase that, that we use all the time. You know, it's exhausting to be around these types of people. I remember I found that really challenging to let go of certain friendships, not because I didn't not want to be in them, but I felt like a really mean person if I said, Hey, I don't want to hang out with you anymore. What was it like for you going through this transition of letting go of the old and bringing in the new? Yeah, there was definitely like one or two friendships that I had some guilt around, but I actually had a very opposite experience where I really connected into my anger and my rage and really appropriate anger. And I was like, what the hell have I been tolerating? And it was so easy for me to cut people out. I was like, how have I been in this for this long? This mm. is so toxic. And I let those people go. And six months later, I had like perfect health. We have no idea how much the people in our lives are affecting us. And I didn't even know what was healthy and unhealthy. I was a therapist, but like, we're not actually taught this. We're not taught, Hey, that's abusive. We just think abuse, like something really extreme, but like emotional abuse. There was so many toxic friends I had in my life when I cut those and family members I've cut out. Wow. And I felt this 
entire level of liberation and freedom. And of course there's like internal backlash. Of course there's guilt. Of course you feel like an asshole, Mm. but at the same time, I was so fed up. I was like liberated on the whole. And I'm at a point in my life. I won't tolerate one ounce of mistreatment ever again, as long as I live. Like there's no tolerance anymore. Yeah. I love what Tony Robbins says. You get what you tolerate. And you truly do, you know, you hear people, oh, but he's so mean to me, but I love him. And it's like, but nothing's going to change if you keep tolerating that. Can I ask, we don't have to go here if you don't want to, but was this personal relationship as well? Like in romantic relationship that this was happening in? Oh my God, I would all over the map. I would date like (laughs) total douchebags. I had a lot of covert narcissists in my life Mm. and a lot of narcissists in my life. And when Mm. I cut those people out and studies have actually shown six months out when you cut out narcissists or energy vampires, whatever you want to call them, your health dramatically improves. Research backs this up. That's right. And the reason why I asked you that is because we see a lot of people really in not healthy relationships and they're lying to themselves. And it's hard because maybe there's a safety problem there that they can't get out right now. You know, I've met some amazing women, especially who are just like, they want to help the world with women who are getting mistreated because they went through it and they got out of it. And then their life was so much better, but geez, it was hard to take the leap. Uh, The environment is really key, but it's fascinating hearing you talk about that was probably one of the biggest challenges and pivotal moments for you was obviously you did a shitload of mindset work and personal work. Before you join the program, getting the structure and the routine and the foundations physically right, and then making those bigger decisions of like, all right, what are my non-negotiables and what am I totally committed to? I feel like, how committed did you feel when you joined the program? A 12. I mean, my personality is kind of (laughs) like... I just take things and run with it. So if you look at it, commitment in terms of, did I watch all the videos? Did I show up to all the, no, absolutely not. But I was willing to cut whoever out. I was willing to do anything to get my health back. And yeah, I think the thing that helped too is when you're in containers, like your group, and I had a mentor. When I was in these safe containers and I was modeled healthy behavior or like what's a healthy relationship, if you just have one model of that or one support group, you take bigger risks in your life. You're willing to leap more. And without that support, and I think this is why it's so hard for people who are isolated and sick. This is why we end up in such bad relationships because we don't have anything else around us. It's better sometimes to be with a toxic person than to be dead alone in bed. So I think that's where we end up being a match to some of this. And once we start to heal and get in safer containers, we start to get braver, I think, and more willing, you know, and our self-esteem goes up. Yeah, I can see where you, the coach comes in now. You're, uh, you're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you got all this awareness. It makes total sense that you've done all this background study and stuff, but you're speaking my language. And I think you pay for proximity and mm-hmm. the word model is so important. People don't know this much, but I invest a hell of a lot of money into mentors always and still do. I've got some great support coaches, mentors in life, in business, in how to create an amazing mission and vision and give more impact. But one of the things I've noticed is we don't necessarily pay for advice. (laughs) What we're really paying for is to be more like the person we're paying. What qualities are they holding within themselves that we are attracted to? And I can just list off so many names in the past and in the present right now of like, I'm not necessarily paying for little tidbits and advice. We think we are. We're like, I just need to know the answer. Tell me the baseline theory. Tell me this. What you're really paying for is inspiration, insight, Mm. wisdom, modeled behavior, exactly what you're talking about, how they speak, how they listen, how they hold themselves, you know, everything. And that, again, the environment then helps you, like you said, inadvertently make the changes that you probably didn't have the courage to beforehand. No, I mean, like you, I'm the same way. I invest so much. I had multiple healers. I was in your group. I had such an incredible support system. Like I invest so much and that's what it took. But to me, that's priceless. Being able to have healthy boundaries and self-esteem, it changes your whole life. So Mm -hmm. yeah, I think having that support is key. Good. This is good. I love it. So what changed after the program? You got your baseline sorted. How long did that take? A few weeks, literally. 
I went from being bedridden every day to out of bed every day in like two weeks. But what people don't get is I had multiple dips after that. Crash out of nowhere, crash out of left field, like I need <laughs> to get back in. <laughs> like I got COVID multiple times. But here's the thing is I've wired myself to health. So like before, being sick had a hidden motivation. Like I was afraid of life. There was unhealed trauma. Once I healed all that stuff, I'm now wired to help. I'm like a buoy. So like if I get dip down, I just come right back up because there's no match to illness. There's no reason for me to be sick. I'm in my purpose. I have my boundaries. I'm here to serve. Mm. I don't need to be ill anymore. I was not expecting this today. We're going deep folks. We're going to talk about secondary gains because really that's what you're talking about here, which is I think we need to speak to it. I want to pre-frame this as well by saying for the people who maybe are in our program right now, or people who are on this journey of recovery program or not, don't compare your story to maybe Margo's who found it so easy within three weeks to get a baseline. You know, obviously there was lots of ups and downs throughout that, but I think this is where people go wrong is they don't realize that you did seven years of work and ups and downs and super high highs and super low lows and reaching out, investing in people for it then to when you finally get what you need, it just clicks. For me, it makes total sense of why it happened the way it happened for you. Total sense. It yeah. wasn't a miracle. It was just the right timing. It was like the hardest thing ever to keep myself out of bed and awake all day. I feel like I was in military level training. It was so hard. It wasn't well, a gentle two weeks by any means. I remember it was so hard for you because you were either go, 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 like way above your baseline or you were nothing. And the goal was for you to stay in the sweet spot for you, which was like, I think from memory, tell me if I'm wrong, but it was, I want to go and do everything. I want to conquer the world. How do I say no? <laughs> How do I stop myself from pushing myself when I feel good, basically? You nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm such an extreme person. So I needed to live in the gray and like chill out and find this rhythm. And I'm so connected to my body now. And to your point, I got COVID in October and it took me four months to recover. I was back at square one. I've had huge setbacks, not just like, oh, a little dip. I've had to start from scratch and it took mm. me longer than that period that I was at. Yeah. But once you have the tools and once you know how to program yourself, you don't sit there and you don't think, oh, I'm never going to get well. And that's the scariest part is when you're laying in bed, you're like, am I stuck like this forever? That's the scariest thing in the world. But you have a formula. There's a cure. You're not stuck. And you just have to be patient. That's really what it is. Yeah. Patience combined with doing the right things at the right time and being fully committed. And again, it's a self assessment. And that's why I love it. I remember a coach said to me once, well, how committed actually are you? And I was like, what are you talking about? I am committed, you know? And then when I got off the phone call, I realized I wasn't, I was 80% committed. I wasn't a hundred. Mm -hmm. I wasn't all in, you know, the gap was what was holding me back. And it wasn't until I fully committed did change really occur. You know, we can talk about, oh, I know this and I know that we know it all really, but are you doing everything, you know? Are you implementing the work? It's like you saying before, I'm never going to be able to get better. Well, just believing that thought and believing that's true. Well, then your behaviors will then act out in the sense that that's true for you. Of course, you're not going to do anything. Of course, you're not going to invest your hard earned money into something that's going to help you because you've committed to staying where you're at, because that's all you mm -hmm. think is possible. We're limited to the thinking that we're currently got in my opinion. So it's really, really important to pay attention to how committed we are. Can yeah, we I think in? that combines yeah. the secondary, the hidden motives. Okay, that's where I want to go. <laughs> secondary gains. This is a powerful thing that so many people go through, but they don't realize they're going through it. What did you say before about there was a reason for me to be sick? Yeah, there was a lot of reasons. It was really serving me from a protective perspective, from a survival perspective. Yes. What were some of them, if you could just name a couple of them? I think there was a few unhealed fears and like trauma and just beliefs about the world. I mean, when I was born, I had a birthmark on my face. I was one of the first kids to undergo surgery oh, and like, it was kind of traumatizing. Yeah. I underwent a ton of procedures as a kid. I was on the news. And so I think I also had the belief that it's not safe to be out there as myself. I had some beliefs like that. And then also just a lot of fears about life just in general. And mm -hmm. I think that that was one of them or like people aren't safe or, you know, I had all kinds of limiting 
programs that were running, I also was so afraid of confrontation. I was so afraid to say no. So I think that that, a lot of it was fear. And I think that it created this barrier between me and the world that was like my little safety nook. I didn't actually have to face anything. And I remember so much of your training. You would say like, once you start to get well, it's not like you just frolic off into the beach. And as soon as I started to get well, I was like, oh my God, this is why I created illness. Because I actually had to face all of my fears. I had to face everything that had been protecting me. And it was the most uncomfortable thing I've ever been through in my life. This is huge. Now, this isn't for everyone because I feel like some people, I certainly through my recovery, I didn't feel like I had secondary gains, but I think we all have secondary gains in life. We do, whether it's like, oh no, I want to stay single because I just want to stay single. But like really truthfully, your heart's been broken and you're so afraid to get it broken again, right? Or I don't like making money because maybe you had a really bad experience with someone who had a lot of money, who was an asshole. And so you never want to be like that. And that's a secondary gain. Secondary gains are really useful in some instances. And I love what you said that it's really a self-preservation act. So it's coming from a place of love. It's a part of you that's trying to protect you, but it's also hindering you from where you really want to be. That's powerful to realize. I'm in the spiritual world and sometimes people are like, you created your illness. And I don't think that's helpful at all. But when you no. explain it from a secondary perspective, like there's some genius reason why you created this and then the ball's in your park and then you get to uncreate it. I got a download one day and I was like, I created this. I can just swing the pendulum to the other side. I'm in charge. And that's when things started to move. Cause I was like, oh, we did this. It was an empowering thing. It wasn't like a self-blame, right? And I think that that secondary gain helps to understand that it was like a protective thing. It wasn't a bad thing. I love the saying, I am the problem and I am the solution. And what you're saying is self-responsibility, really. That's yeah. really what you're saying, which is a huge part. We have a whole training just on how to become responsible for yourself and not blame yourself, not blame others, but just come into a place of empowerment so you can bloody move forwards. Because until you yeah. do that, you can't. Like you're literally just going to grand circles. You're a pinball. You're in a pinball machine and you're just going from <laughs> doctor to doctor to quick fix to blame to it's that person's fault. Why me? <laughs> Until you get it on some level, there's a self-involvement, it's impossible to heal. Agree. 100%. That's what it took for me. You've got to get to that point of pain where you try so hard from the outside. You know, you're looking from the outside in and you're pinballing basically to all these outside external resources and it doesn't work. I think you got to that point of pain because you reached out, I remember the message, it's like, I've had enough, I can't keep going. And the baseline theory makes total sense to me. It's what's been missing in my life. And I love that you said that with these secondary gains, it's a self-protection mechanism. It's not like you're doing it on purpose to beat yourself up and self-sabotage, but it might give you listeners at home listening going, oh, well, that's why I'm self-sabotaging. You don't have mm. to beat yourself out of it. It's like, ah, oh. you know, one of the biggest fears that we see through members going through our program is like, I don't want to have to pay the bills. I don't want to have to work. I have to deal with responsibility. I have to deal with the world. It's scary out there. There's mean people out there. And so, yeah, exactly what you were saying. There's a reason for me to maybe stay stagnant or where I'm at. And at the same time, we also could create a vision that you want to move towards, which would be freaking exciting and heaps of fun and recovery is hard, but not recovering is harder in my eyes. There's suffering on top of suffering, whereas just life in general is hard, but there's still moments of joy and satisfaction and evolution. Something I loved about my illness is when you're dead in bed, you get a whole nother level of fuck it. My whole life just fell apart. I don't have anything to lose. So it almost inspired myself to go after my dreams and do whatever I want. Because I'm like, once you've been laying in bed, staring at a wall for years, nothing can be worse than this, you know, so it opened up this whole new world of like, anything is better. So what do I have to lose? You know, your perspective is just unbelievable. And I don't know if you ever saw that image. It was a drawing of a lady in hospital and there was a mirror. She was laying in her hospital bed, basically dying, but there was an image of what she could see, like a vision. And one vision was 
of one lady just thinking about her dying and getting sicker and feeling like crap and it was like hunched over to walking stick super gray like not feeling good at all and then there was another lady in the next hospital bed and she was there dreaming and it was flowers and it was sunshine and rainbows and there was a dog and she wasn't holding the crutches she was free and it was like holy shit the power of imagination is so powerful because you can choose and mm -hmm. you had a choice, Margot, to lay in bed and look at the wall and go, why me? Which I'm sure you did from time to time. Yeah, you're human. But then you also chose, well, this isn't fun. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> Wouldn't want to wish this on my worst enemy, but I can lay here and think about what I do want and start to visualize that. And I think that is a really powerful thing that a lot of people aren't committed to doing right now and mm -hmm. maybe if you're listening and this is like oh shit i'm not doing any of this well you do have a choice to do that if you want to or you can stay where you're at and constantly ask questions like why me which you can't answer you know it's this victim state mentality questions but it's pretty powerful when you can start to even just lay there and visualize your future of what you want it's really powerful. Something I did, I had this vision board and I had these lights around it. And whenever I would crash, I would get in bed, I'd turn off the lights and I'd turn the lights onto my vision board and I would just stare at it. I looked at that vision board so many times that I actually took it down one day because it was like in me. It had been like a physical part of my body because I looked at that thing for hours sometimes. Wow. Just put on music and stared at it. And I brought that into my life. Yeah, we do a vision workshop at the start of every year with all our members and you were busy living your life and out there. So you probably missed it. But one of them is to create a vision board. And then the second one is to create a mentality vision around that of that daily practice of like, what does it feel like? And feeling the feelings, not just like, oh, that's just a dream that's probably not possible. It's like, oh, shit, this is what I'm working towards. Why do you think having a vision is so important? Because it makes you bigger than your circumstances. Every day I was like, I need to be bigger than this. If this is a level 10 problem, then what's the level 12 of me? How do I not give my power away to this? And even now I have a vision board up in my room. And if I have an off day, or I just stare at it. And I'm like, mm. you're so much bigger. I would do this mind trick thing where I'd be like, this is it. Like my whole life would break down and my health would break. And I'm like, this is all you got. It's like reverse psychology. It makes you be like, I'm so much bigger than my problems. Mm -hmm. And it's just remembering that. And it puts the power back in our court, you know? Yeah. I love that. Again, it's coming back to the, am I the problem or am I going to be the solution? So when CFS Health started, you might not know this, but the word CFS Health wasn't for chronic fatigue syndrome. It was for choice, freedom, success. Oh, no way. Yeah. It was actually future. We just changed it to freedom last year as a team. But when I first came up with it, I was like, I chose every freaking day to get better. I chose mm. that. I didn't lay there and it happened. I had to make a choice every single day. What I ate, what time I went to bed, what I said no to, what I said yes to, my daily routine, my baseline, my vision, everything. And that created my future. By choosing the dailies, like hundreds of decisions every day, probably that created my future. And then that future created success. And what I mean by success, it was doing what I wanted to be able to do, which was go run down the beach, go surfing. Back then it was basketball coaching, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So it's choice, future, success. And then we changed it last year to freedom because we found that when we were working with so many people from all over the world, they were actually creating freedom. Yeah. Like you are, you've created freedom in your life. You know, you're like, oh, maybe I'm going to move to Australia for a bit. Maybe I'm going to buy a house in Colorado. You know, like you're creating freedom. And I'd love to talk before we finish up. I'd love to talk about your career. All right. Well, marriage counseling is not for Margot Miller. <laughs> no, hard no. <laughs> hard no. <laughs> So how did you navigate that? Because I feel like for everyone at home, they've probably been, for most, they've probably been told that, you know, little Johnny, you should be an accountant or, you know, lawyers make very good money. You should go and do that. And I, I've met so, so many people who felt so much pressure from their told job that they would and should do. 
100%. And that's what I loved about my illness is it deprogrammed me. I was like, I don't give a shit what society says. My parents were horrified. Are you kidding me? Like I left this incredible career. I was going to get scholarship to get a doctorate. And I moved to LA and became a spirit animal and was like going viral for like an animal dance. My parents were like, we failed. We failed. I just had to know that in my path, that every time that I had self-doubt or any time that I got judgment from other people, it was like my North star. It was like, I am following my soul. And then it evolved. And then I came into my coaching business, my healing business. I'm going back to get my doctor and my parents are like in awe of me. And they're like, everything that they suggested and thought was right was wrong. And I just kept following my guidance and I healed. I'm going back to school. I have a home in the mountains like they were just like whoa and now they know to trust my own guidance because we have an internal system and we have a north star and if we don't follow that i believe we end up getting sick we end up in relationships and when we start to reconnect to that yeah we're gonna get judgment at times yeah we're gonna get pushback but that's the sign we're on the right track and that's something i've learned over and over mm. again so i don't question my guidance anymore i just go for it you know that's so cool yeah i love yeah that. I think the other thing that I love that you have embedded from the program, and again, this is what I love about the program is you've got the body wisdom now. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, like it's like body wisdom on the intuitive sense of like, this is in alignment and congruent, or this is incongruent and it doesn't feel good. And when you get a cold or flu, when you get COVID, you know what to do. You know what I mean? You know how to look after yourself and bounce back like a healthy person. Before your program, it was a zero. Me and my relationship with my body was like negative zero. Now it's like a 12 out of 10. It's not even hard. It's so easy to just follow my body. It's like my body's running the show now. Yeah. I'm like taking the back seat. And before I just dragged that thing around, you know? So fascinating. Does your head lead or does your full body lead as in like when you wake up or when you're deciding what you're going to do, it's a body feeling versus like, oh, I think I should do this. It's all body. I'm in the passenger seat. Of course I have a say, but it'll take me out on walks. It'll tell me when I need to go to the pool. It'll tell me what to do. It's like yeah. walking me. It's That's guiding cool. the ship. Yeah. That's, cool. That's really cool. Yeah. It's the innate body wisdom. Yeah. 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 Even if I'm like at an appointment or something and it feels off, I'll just excuse myself. I've been at dinner parties where just, I felt anxiety and I've left and my body's just like, we don't want to be here. So I just get up and go. Mm. I, that's another thing is I don't ignore it and justify it and be like, oh, this is fine. This is a normal dinner party. Just sit still. I'm like, no, we don't feel good. We're going to go, you mm. know? It's fascinating. You've gotten really solid on your boundaries and it's just like, yeah, you're number one. And there's just no fear of judgment or worry. I could care less. I don't walk on eggshells. And I was at a zero with that too, before your program. I had no boundaries. And now I'm like borderline mastering it. It's like the only way to live now, mm. you know? <laughs> so what has been the most significant changes? Just like three, let's list three. Mm -hmm since joining the program you mentioned the boundaries is like you feel like you pretty much master that which i would tend to agree i think we might need to bring you on for a workshop actually for our members now that'd be amazing boundaries 101 yeah. with margot miller that sounds great let's do that yeah i can also what? clear subconscious fears for people too there you go clear what? those hidden agenda self-sabotage you know? yeah what are two other things that had the biggest significance on your recovery through the program? I think healing unworthiness. That was a big one. And then I think the other one, God, I feel like that's it. If you can just feel worthy to live your dream life and put yourself first. And if you have good boundaries, that's literally all you need. I don't even think you need a third. I don't think there was a third one. Maybe yeah. the body part, body. the body intelligence and like talking to my body, being like, what do you want to eat? What do you want to do? Like making it my friend instead of my enemy. Dude, I love that you just said the food thing because again, people are like, what diet do you teach? And it's like the one that your body wants. You need to tune into your body and go, what does my body need? And often people mm -hmm. don't realize it's like, I'm just eating so much sugar and I feel like crap. It's like, yeah, but underneath that, what's it asking for? It's asking for satiation. It's asking to feel satisfied at, at every meal and it is not simply doing it. And so it's a journey to learn that and to embed that in your life. Super, super powerful. Before we finish up, what are your plans? You're now kind of 
coaching people, but in a more subconscious level of letting go of life roadblocks. Yeah. Give us a little update on Margot Miller now. Yeah. So I just moved out of LA. I'm in Colorado. I bought a house. It's brand new. Congratulations. Freaking amazing. <laughs> yep. I'm going back to get my doctorate in health and wellness and I am building my business. So I use Theta Healing, which uses kinesiology, again, brings the body to muscle test. And then I clear beliefs from a higher level of consciousness. So it's very intuitive, but I found that it fast tracks things. So I use that. And then I do a couple other modalities. So it's basically like a more intuitive way of doing therapy by mm -hmm. working mainly with the subconscious versus the conscious. So that's kind of where I'm at, just building my business, building nice. a home. I'm building a new life, basically. And then I'm going to go travel and visit Australia. <laughs> yeah, I think Australia would love to have you. <laughs> Bring my dinosaur moves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think, yeah, definitely. We spoke off air. I think Sydney, you're going to love Bondi Beach. That's the place for you. It's all having. about rebuilding. Rebuilding, rebuilding yeah, I love that. You know, you probably would have stayed stuck for a lot longer if you tried to build your old life. In fact, you probably wouldn't have got better. And it was almost like you looked over your shoulder, you're like, no more. I'm, <laughs> from here on, I'm moving forwards and I'm building my new life. And that's what it's all about. You know, that's really what it's about. Stop chasing the old, stop chasing what you had, stop thinking about what you had and start building what you want. Don't wait. You can't wait to get better. That's so frustrating to watch. One of my favorite things you said was you want to suffer with life. You don't want to suffer with illness. You could hear these things in my life and be like, oh, she's made it. There's no problems. No, I have all new levels of challenges, all new levels of discomfort. And I love that because that stuck with me so much. I'm like, oh, I'm struggling with life. Like this is a sign mm. of expansion. I'm not struggling with health. And I think that's what it is. It's like we want new challenges. That's a sign that we're evolving. It's not just the success part. It's the new challenges too. So I always keep that in mind. I'm like, am I having new challenges? Am I having new things that I need to work through? And that to me is also a sign of growth, you know? It's personal growth. And I love one of our quote cards that, you know, the members deck that we give everyone new level, new devil. At every level in life, there's a new devil. It's like, you can't have growth without challenge. And again, it goes out saying recovery is hard, but not recovering harder. And it's like, we tell our guys, you know, in lifestyle integration, as you get healthier, yeah, you might have to pay the bill soon and you've got to take the washing out and you've got to deal with relationships. Now we had a client who had to deal with some really nasty people in the workplace. And so it was navigating around boundaries with that and relationships and changing relationships as in like, oh, I don't want to be in this anymore. And letting that go and then getting into a new one and going, I'm a different person now. So welcome. This is me, you know, and owning that. So it's fascinating. Yeah. yeah. And to your point, there was a lot of periods where I was alone when I got well, because it wasn't like my life crumbled and I just waltzed into my new one. <laughs> like there's periods where you're like alone and you have to go through this discomfort and there's these voids and initiation. So it's like, it's all the things, but I would not take back any of the challenges now I remind myself too I'm like once you're dead in bed and you heal once you heal from CFS there's nothing you can't do in life my problems are a walk in the park compared to not being able to walk you know yeah exactly it gives you a huge perspective doesn't it yeah yeah it does. yeah what would you say to someone who's sitting on the fence on the CFS Health Recovery Program? They've probably tried a lot of things just like you had they tried everything and they're just like oh is this gonna be another thing that I fail at yeah, weirdly, I just got chills. I can't tell you how many people I've referred to your program already. I think it's hands down the most affordable, first off. Second of all, it's the most comprehensive. Third of all, it's the most empowering. And for me, it's impossible to not heal with your program. It just might take a lot more work, consistency, and effort and more time than you expect. But it's impossible not to if you just if you do follow it. Yeah. To me, yeah. I'm like, you have everything in there. And then of course you can hire healers and extra support and nutrition and all that. But to me, your program covers every base. That's the thing. When I found the baseline and understood the thing, I'm like, this is bulletproof. Yeah. So good. You're making me cry. Oh. <laughs> I've like, got like, tears in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to cry. I know I, and even when I would dip, I'd go back and I'd listen to your story. And I'm like, thank God for this person. You were the difference between me being stuck in this cycle 
and then having a totally new life. Like this is all you need. This is one program. And if you want to branch out from there, but this has everything Mm -hmm. for you to get out of bed and live your life and create a new one and the support to, and all the testimonials and examples you have, it's just inspiration, you know? Mm, Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. No, just those three words that you used. I remember writing those three words on a whiteboard like 13 years ago. The three that you just said before about, you know, comprehensive empowerment and was the first one again. I can't remember too many tears, my tears were like (laughs) coming up. We'll have to go back and listen. Wow, that's so wild. Yeah, yeah. It was literally the three words that I wrote on a whiteboard 13 years ago. And that's exactly what I wanted because it was so freaking dark 18 years ago. It was so dark. There was nothing like that. And obviously as I started to get better and do the stuff that we teach now, it was all trial and error, but I just remember I was just like, I do not want anyone else to have to ever go through this on their own. Cause that's how painful it was for me and my family. So, you know, it was brought out of a place of pain, but then obviously there is a way, but the way isn't naturally by going to the doctor and getting a pill, you know? And I think, like you said, it's that self responsibility, that self starting that how committed actually are you to yourself? and going through these layers of recovery, layers of life too. Yeah, because even healers and coaches I worked with could only take me so far. It was your program and the baseline and the the self-empowerment. It was all that that really made or broke my health. And so, yeah, Mm -hmm. I agree. There wasn't anything out there. When I first was healing, there was nothing. Nope. And now because of COVID, people are more familiar because it's like post viral fatigue. But even like four years ago, it wasn't, mm. people are like, oh, the thing that's in your head, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're like, oh, you're tired a lot. You're like, actually, no, it's not you're even like, close to what I'm going slap through. Them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like, no, this is not about needing a cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally. Yeah. You need to drink more coffee and freaking, yeah, no, thanks. That's not going to help. Dude, thank you so much, Margo. This has just been, I wasn't really expecting to go where we went, which is amazing. Hopefully listeners at home, you guys found it helpful. Please leave some love in the comments section. And Margo, what would you like to say to people out there suffering right now? Just, you know, any last words of kind of wisdom? Yeah, I think that one, there's maybe a hidden gift in this that you can't even mentally comprehend on any level. And then two, if you're fortunate enough to be here, there's no need to not be hopeless. There might be moments where you lose hope, but you just found gold. So there's no reason you can't heal and come back to a life that's better than what you could have imagined. So hang in there and be open to receiving something totally unknown from this crazy illness because there's some hidden gifts in there, I can guarantee. Amazing. You are an absolute gem. I'm going to call you Sunshine. Margot Sunshine Miller is your middle name now. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Let's get you in for a workshop on Boundaries 101 because I feel like you've got a lot to give. Yeah. I will bring in the master techniques. Yes, please do. All right. We'll speak to you soon. Thanks, heaps. And big love to everyone. We'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. All right. (laughs) Hey, I hope this video was really helpful for you. If you haven't already, please hit the like button and feel free to leave a comment. What was your takeaway, your insight from today's? video, it's really helpful to actually write your learnings down. We seem to embed it better and it seems to help us move forwards with life. Here are three ways we can help you right now whenever you're ready. The first way is make sure you add yourself into our free information recovery group on Facebook. We'll leave a link in the description below. It's a really supportive, encouraging place. There's no negative venting. You can ask questions to other people. There's something like seven, 8,000 people in there right now. And I'm sure by the time you're watching this video, there's even more. So go over there right now. We share success stories. We share our latest free trainings that come to the public. And we always share upcoming information about upgrades inside our program. And also when we offer free webinars or free information nights that can further help you with your own recovery. The second way we can help you, which is one of my favorite is through all our free trainings. We're going to leave a link in the description with our favorite free trainings that we know can help you start your recovery, whether that's through our baseline training, which will help you stop pushing and crashing our three stages of recovery to figure out exactly where you're at and know what to do next 
or my favorite, which is our guest panel workshop, which was actually exclusive for our members. It was so damn good that I actually asked them, can we share this to the public? They all said yes, all five of them. So thank you past members. They share their five recovery secrets and it's really powerful. There's tears, there's aha moments, there's real key insight and inspiration. And so whether you're a one out of 10 and you're really struggling right now, or whether you're further along in your recovery journey and you're integrating back into life, we have you covered. The third way we can help you is through our actual paid online recovery program, the mentorship recovery program. And if you are interested in getting proper help, a holistic comprehensive plan, professional coaching from the best coaches in the world, whether that's with mindset, movement, nutrition, restorative movement, reconditioning, integrating back into life, integrative medicine, baseline, structure, routine, accountability, all things health and life. Feel free to apply for the program today. All you need to do is click on the form, cfshealth.com slash form, fill out the short two to three minute form application and the team will be in touch with all the details that you need to know about the program via email. So make sure you check your spam folder for all the free trainings. If you've sent through an application, please be patient. My team are real people, okay? They're not robots. So if we don't get back to you within seconds or hours, it's okay. <laughs> we will get back to you. If you don't hear from the team within two to three days, that means that it's basically gone to spam or junk and it's gone missing. So please send a follow-up email to the team at info at cfshealth.com. If you have any questions, go check it out. But I would highly recommend adding yourself into the free group right now. Go click on that link in the description. Go download all the free trainings. Honestly, the whole reason why this whole thing started is because when I went through this myself, it was so painful and so excruciating that I didn't want anyone else to have to go through it. And some of these free trainings are so damn valuable. Back then I would have paid thousands of dollars for. We've had so many comments and emails and posts saying, oh my God, the baseline training was a game changer for me. Toby, I've been doing this now for three months and I'm feeling so much better. My symptoms are decreasing. I've got more stamina. I've got more energy. I'm able to do more things. So, you know, whether you're learning from us and consuming our content through our free format, I'm so stoked. Whether that's in our paid program, I don't really care. Either way, all I want to make sure is that you are moving forwards. You are starting to really implement this work. And that's really what it's all about. Once we implement, we make change and we start to move forwards. Sending you a ton of love. Of course, feel free to consume as much of the YouTube videos as you like. There's so many really, really great ones, new and old. Sending you a ton of love and uh, speak to you very, very soon. All the best for now.